Welcome to It's Upgrade Season, the only place to get raw and unfiltered advice on how to get your shit together one week at a time. I'm your host, Alexandria, and join me every Monday for the upgrade and every Friday for the wind down where I'm going to be answering your dilemmas. Small shifts, huge upgrades. Let's fucking do this. Happy Friday, you guys. This is our second part of our Logan interview here in LA. I am so excited to bring more of this conversation to you. So without further ado, here is the Friday wind down. Welcome to the wind down. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> if you feel a bit nervous right now, it's normal to feel nervous about, how are you feeling? Good. Good, no, okay. Good. Sometimes people say they get nervous for the wind down because what the hell are you going to ask me now? Oh man. <laughs> well, um, we're loosening up. <laughs> so something you shared with me before we started recording is about your boyfriend Mm -hmm. and I feel like obviously because it's the jewelry brand we don't necessarily see a lot of your like personal life yeah so how did you guys meet we met through a mutual friend one of my best friends actually and it was more to talk about work stuff Mm -hmm. but it was like crazy because he had just gotten out of a relationship so that timing wasn't right, but we felt this like strong pull to each other. It was like, you know when your soul recognizes, it's because I truly believe, and I know this to be true, but I don't try to push it on anybody because everything should resonate with you. But when I think about, and I've studied like past life experiences and near death experiences and mm-hmm. all this stuff for a long time, years, like I've looked into the science behind this and I've read so many books on it and it's like, we come into this life like our soul knowing what's going to happen but we're given amnesia like when we enter the human body because if you knew everything that was going to happen you wouldn't be able to live because you'd be like i know the whole story right so it has to unfold and then when you know truth when you feel it like you get sometimes goosebumps or you just feel it like this recognition. Yeah. Oh, that, that person I'm supposed to talk to, or mm-hmm. this feels right. You get, what's it called? What's the overwhelming, the thing called? Deja vu. Deja vu. Yeah. Deja vu is like very like spiritual in a way because it's, oh, whoa. It's like your soul starts to go, yeah, I remember that this mm-hmm. was going to happen or whatever. I'm at the right place. And it's the right time or whatever. And so when we met each other and we just started talking, it was like, we had so much in common, like our life mm-hmm. story like just like our upbringing and like this like growing up on boats and a lot of uncertainty like I grew up with like hurricane I'm from the Outer Banks of North Carolina like hurricanes and he grew up on the water and this and that and but it like again it wasn't the right timing even though he said it was for him I was like no (laughs) you're like honey but yeah I think we have these relationships and I'm in such a beautiful one I think like in love, like you have to leave your ego at the door Mm. because there's so many things like you hear, oh, this isn't right. Like you have these like this idea in your mind of like how it's supposed to be Mm -hmm. and you just have to surrender like when it comes and you try to push it away because you're like, no, because it needs to be like this. And it's if you run your life like that, like you'll never find someone because no one's going to be exactly just like perfectionism. Like you're never going to be perfect. Neither is anyone else. Yeah. Um, and neither are the circumstances. You just have to like stay strong and work through it. Yeah. Um, and I think like I'm so grateful because in all of my relationships I've evolved. I look back at all of them and I think they're all beautiful. And I mm-hmm. and I love the people that I was with unconditionally. I learned that as, as my business grew and I got mm-hmm. more eyeballs and things that privacy is peace. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of things I'd like to share yeah. on there but I don't because it's like for my own just like sense of peace yeah I think privacy is truly peace you yeah. know and it's like build in private relationship private until it's permanent and things like that yeah and I keep that sacredness to myself because sometimes when you put too much out there it's people can try and like mess with things and stuff but yeah totally <laughs> yeah I totally get that and like How do you find the line for you? Is it like when something's permanent, you're like, okay, how do you find that line of what to share and what not to share in order to protect your peace? Like for a relationship, I feel like when it becomes more permanent, then Mm -hmm. it's shareable, like marriage or something like that. The privacy thing, I think being vulnerable, there's like a balance between like sharing and being vulnerable on the gram, Mm -hmm. but then also keeping some things for yourself. 
I'm going to get back more into the gem journal side. And Mm -hmm. then that side will have more of like my personal life. But I want to keep like the business stuff like a little more separate because it's we're selling jewelry and I don't want things to get like too distracting. So it's like for the customers who really want to know more about me and my lifestyle and um, they can look more into that side. So that is my intention for, you know, the rest of this year is to really devote into that. I just want to say how refreshing it is to hear that. And I think so many people will be like refreshed to hear that as well, because I think we're living in an age where we've had Instagram in our lives for quite a while now. I think I've had Instagram yeah. for like 10 years or something. Yeah. Like, I remember I first got it in Australia and I was like late to the game with it. Yeah. And I think we have become used to a, a privacy invasion in, in many ways. And like yeah. also con- sometimes a compulsion to feel like we have to share, or we should share. Like that's something I've been working through recently. Like a lot of, well, all of my business was built on Instagram in terms of clients when I was coaching and things like that. And as I'm transitioning at the moment, I was really like asking myself like, why am I posting this? Mm-hmm. Or why do I feel I need to share this? Am I, is it coming from that right place still? Mm-hmm. Cause I think, they, they just became a pattern of feeling like I should yeah. rather than I want to or this feels good to share and having my son as well navigating that I'm I am happy to share him but it's I don't want to overshare him either it's a weird it's a weird thing that we live with in the world right. having Instagram and it's amazing but it's also yeah it's a weird one to navigate I want to ask you you said that you love all your exes and that you have got this amazing relationship I don't necessarily keep in touch with all of them or anything like that I wanted to ask you about this I was like you are way more evolved than I am (laughs) no I don't it's not like that I wouldn't do that out of the respect for my current relationship Mm -hmm. I think it's like you need I hear of people like they become best friends with their ex-partner or something and I think that's amazing I just feel like I'm grateful for all of them. Mm. So grateful. And the relationship that I had in my 20s, like my second half of my 20s, from 25 to 27, 28, it was like so beautiful. Mm. Like I have such fond memories. Mm. And yeah, it didn't work out like long term and it wasn't the right thing. But I just really, truly like still have so much love for this person and like all the things that we did together and all the growth and discomfort and comfort and everything. And so Mm -hmm. I think it's just so important to look back at our relationships and like in a healing way, like some of, and learn from them. Some of them were like super intense and I learned like about unresolved trauma, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but like just to blame your partner, be like, oh, he was a narcissist or he was this or it just isn't productive. Like that, yes, can help you understand their behavior and it's Mm. super important to learn okay so that wasn't a reflection on me like some of that behavior was literally because of a complex that like he can't like then have compassion for that like he couldn't help that because like his this happened to him in childhood which Mm. i'm talking about first thing experience that contributed to this behavior Mm. and of course he doesn't want to feel that way. and But it's not for, on me to continue staying with someone when it's toxic or yeah. like X, Y, Z. And so it's like really learning about yourself and like your boundaries and mm-hmm. like what. So I, I try to look at it like that in yeah. a way. I love yeah. that. I love that lens of compassion. But I think you gave such an important caveat there as well in terms of doesn't mean you then keep them in your life. Oh, for sure. I feel like that sometimes that nuance gets lost, particularly in like the spiritual world when forgiveness so key compassion so beautiful yeah. like those things free you in many ways like i know when i'm tap into forgiveness and compassion and, and like i feel free but that doesn't mean i'm then gonna invite those people into my life and be no. like let's just keep doing this pattern that's not working oh not at all you in know? fact the be- the faster you just my advice is like intuition just mm. listen to your intuition If you keep breaking up, if he keeps doing the same thing, dump him and block him (laughs) with love. Yeah. Like, it's just, there's no reason to, like, dip your toe back in the water because you just know it's just going to suck you back in. Yeah. So I'm, like, a firm believer in, like, when it's done, like, literally block them and don't, and you can unblock it later or whatever, but just, like, for your own well-being and for theirs, too, there's no point. So just go back to yourself and don't jump into something else like super fast go back to yourself get your sense like get back on two feet and like your self-love and all that stuff yeah how have you because I feel like with everything you shared in the other episode like 
there must have been, you, you spoke about feeling like you were wrong. I think that's such a core wound for so many of us, like yeah. feeling wrong, feeling bad, like a bad person or feeling bad in some way, feeling unlovable. Like I feel like these are all so many of the wounds that we carry around if you dig underneath the limiting beliefs and, and the stories. How are some of the ways that you've embodied that self-love in your own journey and, and really honored your own self-worth? Yeah, I mean, through like tools, you mean? or Yeah, like uh, tools or experiences or, or just ways that you move around the world now. I think, yeah, I think relationships, like people don't want, it's such a harsh truth, but like relationships are mirrors. Like, mm. And in those mirrors, we find ourselves, we find things that are unresolved mm. traumas from childhood. Like maybe you're not doing the same behavior as that person, but that person is showing you the trigger is showing you that there's unresolved healing mm. that needs to be addressed and so self-love and compassion those things like after a relationship y'all know how it feels you after a relationship when you know it was the right thing and like suddenly you're like so full of energy and yeah. oh my god there's like this person is not draining you anymore and trying yeah. to make you feel like I experienced that a couple times, a few times. <laughs> same. Where same. <laughs> they, it's like unfortunate because it's like, you're so amazing. Why are you trying to suppress me or make mm -hmm. me not feel like smaller or whatever? Like, why would you do that? And it was, but it's not, that's again, like that would be like me blaming them. It's like me taking my power back is like being like, no, I'm not going to do this. Like, I'm yeah. not going to keep, keep myself back. Like I yeah. will choose myself over and over like I won't put up with that behavior like you're not a man yet you know yeah. or a woman or whatever like until you've until you really have stepped into your own power and go wait I'm only going to have another diamond next to me that's just going to reflect that light back to me and no one's perfect like we all people experience insecurity and they're gonna like your partner's gonna hurt you sometimes or whatever but like overall like at least like I'd say 75 percent of the time they should really just be like you know, building you up and like all those things. So um, self-love, just going back to my rituals mm. um, and like really being okay alone. Like I am so fine with being, going, traveling alone. Like I love going on a trip by myself I'm sometimes. The best. It's like, there's nobody, you don't have to check in. Like you yeah. can do whatever you want. You're yeah. just like, just freedom. You and know? silence. <laughs> and silence. Yeah. When you want, where you want, you yes. can sleep. You can go to bed at 6 p.m. if you want to. You can dance in your underwear. You can, like, yeah, it's just crazy. You can do that with your partner anyways. But, yeah. I love that. So. You mentioned rituals then. Like, what are some of the rituals? Do you have, like, daily rituals that you do? Or? Yeah, just every morning I wake up and I just say thank you. I'm mm. just like, thank you so much. When I start going into, like, my why, mm. thank you for X because this. I think it's, like important to say thank you and then why you're grateful mm -hmm. so I, I go into like my gratitude if I have time which I I really like to have that moment where I like go and sit and I journal like what I'm grateful for and I great and I journal like sometimes just free writing like the artist way style and I come to like conclusions and things mm -hmm. through that process it, it just really depends on the day and like what I'm feeling yeah but like my rose water, like I have my 1111 rose water yeah. and it just, that's like a small ritual of, yes, like it, first of all, it does clean your, cleanse your aura. Mm. Um, and it reminds me of like my vulnerability and my strengths, mm. uh, cause the roses yeah. and it just, it's like, it rains on me and I feel like this like abundance and love and like all those things other rituals are just taking care of myself, like yeah. going to bed early, you know, getting my seven hours. And uh, if I can, I think another form of self-love is like boundaries, like with yourself and with others, you know, saying like, no, if it's, if you don't feel like your body is saying rest or like whatever, yeah. taking long baths with mm. Epsom salts and magnesium salts. Very important um, for a mermaid. <laughs> so important. The salt. I'm like, yeah. wow. Going, walking on the ground barefoot. It's mm. like so, I just feel, I'll be walking and I'm like, 
my God, there's like s- this layer that I've just got to get off. Yeah. So what I love about those as well is like, they're so simple. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people think, and don't get me wrong. I love all like the bougie wellness stuff these days as well. Oh like, yeah. I'm a for sucker sure. for it. And like, it's so simple. It's so easy. Like you mentioned the artist way morning practice. That's like literally just getting a notepad and just like writing whatever comes up whenever it comes up and just like, it's just free writing. Yes. So easy, so simple. It's free to do. And like the way that you just feel like a blank slate after that and so clear and so much more clarity. These are such easy things for us to do. Yeah. I, I want to come back to the romantic relationships for a minute because one thing I would just love to know is like, how the hell do you do it all? You've got this amazing business. You've got a relationship. You're looking after yourself. Like, how do you feel like you have a balance or yeah just how do you navigate and you're traveling a lot as well I always see yeah. these amazing incredible trips as well yeah I do have a bat like I had to work to get to the balance mm. I mean you could say I have it all but I also like you like I definitely want to have a family like mm. you have you know I think it's so easy for us to look at others and be like oh they have it all but it's okay I have this like beautiful business and I love what I do there's also like a lot of stress that comes along with that that people don't see every night when I go to bed at night it's I have 12 people like that I have to like take care of yeah. not only myself but all these other people that I want to keep motivated and excited and my clients and everything so it's, it is a lot but I just practice surrendering and going okay like I'm going to luckily because I do what I love like I can traveling for me is just in my blood I've Mm. always wanted to like going back to when I was a kid and discovering places and seeing different cultures and going to places where I don't understand the language and being like okay with that okay I can't control the situation yeah and that's all right you know I get to like I find inspiration in Marrakesh and Italy like wherever it is Egypt Mm. And I get to, you know, use my jewelry as because it's so all these things I find inspiration in these places. And then people feel that, you know, they feel it and they feel like the energy of like excitement and all that stuff. So it balances itself because it's like I'm able to do the marketing, yeah. enjoy myself. Yeah. People buy like fun, mm-hmm. like even Warren Buffett says that. So it's like the more you can just like have fun in what you're doing, like yeah. the more other people are gonna wanna get a, get on board. 100%, I really have noticed that. Like I realize that so much of the decisions I make are from a frequency. Yes. They're not actually, maybe there are some people who make super like logical decisions all the time, but for me, it's definitely like a frequency thing and that ha- the way that infuses into everything you can like 100% feel. And Yeah, it's so true. Like, I wonder sometimes if we're chasing this ghost of balance and this ghost of this. Because also I feel like even if you have balance, life will just throw shit at you. (laughs) Like, yeah, I had that recently. We had this whole situation happening and it it was so like it felt so left field. And that's just life. Life's just going to be like, you think you've got it nailed right now. I'm just going to rustle things around yeah. a little bit and see how <laughs> see where you land after this throw one. Throw this into the mix. Yeah, yeah, throw this into the mix. So, yeah, it's such a good point. Um, thank you so much. It's been incredible getting to just hear your journey, hear your wisdom. You are so wise. Please thank bring back so the gem much. journal because I'm going to be I'm going to be reading it. Okay. And thank yeah, you. I'd love it if you could make it a book. I said this earlier. People have said that and I I definitely want to at some point mm. or Substack even. Ooh. And eventually, a, like, in print and, yeah. yeah, to be able to hold it. And, and I like a substack as well, though, yeah. Can just, just, yeah. Yeah, so we'll see. Exciting. Thank you so much for having me. This was so lovely. You're Thank such you. a gem. Goddess. Thanks, the perfect model for my jewelry. Thank Thanks, you.